Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about bending stress and area moment of inertia. So one really cool picture here is a cross section of the Golden Gate Bridge where we're able to see how big the cross section is compared to like a human as you can see on the side. And we're going to be able to find the area moment of inertia by the end of the video. So what is area moment of inertia? So the definition of area moment of inertia is the beam's ability to reflect deflection or bending over a cross sectional area. So basically at its very core it's resistance to bending. This is different than the inertia you learn in rotational motion because that inertia refers to its resistance to rotation, while this is its resistance to bending. So a higher moment, area moment of inertia means that it's stronger and tends to be more expensive, while a lower one tends to be weaker and easier to bend. However, it's cheaper, so there's a cost balance there. So for our purposes, we're only going to be focusing on two types of cross-section, a rectangle and a circle. So the equation for a rectangle um, area moment of inertia is going to be base times height cubed all over 12. And for a circle, it's going to be pi um, radius to the fourth power all over 4. So let's do some practice by finding the area moment of inertia of the Golden Gate Bridge. So the radius of the Golden Gate Bridge is 0.462 meters, which is pretty big if you think about it. That means the entire diameter of the Golden Gate Bridge is about a meter stick. So let's write down our equation for a circular moment area of inertia, which is I equals pi r to the fourth all over 4. And well, all we have to do is substitute that in. So I'm going to substitute in. 0 0.462 to the fourth all over four. So I end up getting that my area moment of inertia is 0 0.0358 meters to the fourth power. So here we're gonna compare two different area moment of inertia of the same geometry, but flipped over, rotated a little bit. So let's compare we're going to be rotating it like this for both of them, trying to bend it in that direction, and now we're going to compare. So remember that the equation for a rectangle is going to be base times height cubed all over 12. So in this case, our base is going to be 5, our height cubed is going to be 1 to the third power all over 12. So for the first one, we get 5 over 12. For the second one, we get that our base is going to be 1, our height is 5, and... 5 cubed all over 12. So we get it's going to be 125 over 12. So this is pretty crazy because even though it has the same geometry, so it costs the same amount of materials, I get a 5 times increase from the, putting it in this orientation. So as engineers, we want to be really smart in how we orient things because even though we have the same object that costs the same, by orienting them in different ways, we could get things that are much stronger. So now we're going to talk about bending stress. So bending stress is going to define the stresses within a cross section of the beam. So one thing we're going to define is something called the neutral axis, which is this red line in the center of the beam. And we're going to call that y equals zero. We're going to call the top of the beam y equals h over two, and the bottom of the beam y equals negative h over two. So things to note, when you're bending a beam, half of the beam will be in tension, which is the top half, and it's going to be labeled by a positive bending stress. And the bottom of the beam will be in compression, which is um, shown by the negative sign. So the equation for bending stress is going to be this, my times i, where m is your moment, y is the distance from the neutral axis, and i is the area moment of inertia that we just talked about before. One thing to note is that as you get further away from the center neutral axis, your bending stress will increase. So things that you really want to worry about is this outer section of your beam. So the final thing that we're going to be talking about is something called deflection. Deflection is the downward displacement of the beam as it is loaded against its tip. So the equation for this is going to be delta x is equal to fx squared all over 6ei, where e is going to be your Young's modulus, um, times 3L minus X. So that means at the tip, which will have a maximum deflection, we could plug in L for that, and we're going to get F L cubed over 3EI. So this is the maximum deflection of our beam.